for the NFC Championship game about 35 months ago. But here are the Packers. They get their man, Aaron Rodgers, back after the concussion he missed last week. And I think that's real important, too, because it's a Packers team that's coming off of two very disappointing losses. And I know that when they go into a ball game, they feel that they've got a great matchup on the outside with their skill players against any defensive backs that they're facing. I think Mike McCarthy said it best this week, Joe. He said, we've got ourselves a heck of a quarterback in Aaron Rodgers. We're going to march him out today, and we're going to try to see what we can do getting plays down the field. You have to wonder how the Giants rebound after that debilitating loss last week at home to the Eagles. Yeah, I think everybody's kind of wondering how they're going to respond to that. Eli Manning coming off a heck of a game last week himself. But this is a defense in the Packers, very difficult to throw the ball against. The Giants are going to have to have success running the football with Ahmad Bradshaw and then Brandon Jacobs. Let's go down to the field. Here's Pam Oliver. Well, Joe, for the Giants, there were no special messages, no rah-rah speeches. OCU Manure told me before the game that we all get it. We all understand the importance of this game. Last week, he says, is completely behind us. He believes that the Giants are focused and ready to handle their business. Back to you. All right, Pam. So as we get ready for kickoff, here are the specifics about the weather. 26 degrees. There's a breeze through this stadium. It is clear, but it is crisp. Packers won the toss they receive. And Sam Shields waits for the kick from Lawrence Times. Off we go. From inside the 10. Shields out to the 25 and beyond. They're going to mark him down near the 27. Blackburn on the stop, a return of 18 yards. And the crowd here at Lambeau is happy to see number 12 back. Number 10, Matt Flynn played okay at New England last Sunday night, but Aaron Rodgers is the guy that this offense is centered around. He can do it with his arm. He can do it with his legs. He has suffered two concussions here in 2010. Inside handoff is to Kuhn. And John Kuhn picks up six. As you look at the backs and receivers, we will shift to the offensive line. The center and right guard Wells and Sitton are playing well, but the two tackles, Troy, are going to be tested by that Giants defensive front. Boy, they sure are. And Chad Clifton has really been somewhat inconsistent. Had a tough night last week in that New England ball game. He's going to have to do a better job here in this one. Brandon Jackson gets it. And Brandon Jackson drags Antrell Roll for a gain of three it'll be third in a yard coming up now we look at this defense which is number two overall in the NFL and they have more takeaways as a group than any team in the National Football League secondary is good and they use a lot of three safety sets up front on the edge with human Yura and tuck that's as good as it gets third and one. First throw, short throw, Kuhn, first down. Kenny Phillips on the stop. Well, you see Aaron Rodgers there, and he's going with a new helmet this week in light of the concussions that he has suffered. And this is supposed to be a new and improved helmet that is supposed to help eliminate some of those type of injuries but it has been an adjustment this week for him and he acknowledged that throughout the week one breaking in a new helmet but then getting adjusted to the fact that it's an entirely different fit altogether. Rogers comes across the middle for Jennings incomplete. Well you can see it's tighter on his face. And some of his teammates were giving him trouble for it. Whatever it takes to keep him on the field when we talked to him, he said it was really a group effort and a group decision, something he's been really putting off. He suffered a concussion at Washington in October, and he suffered a concussion two weeks ago in Detroit. I do think the fact that he's willing to, to go with an entirely different helmet says a lot about the concern that he has with the head injury that he's suffered. Handoff on second and ten to Jackson. And Jackson brought down immediately by Goff. No gain. And now third and ten coming up. And we see the Packers come into this game early running the football. And 
you know this is something that this team overall over the second half of the season has has struggled to do but last week they ran the ball fairly well Brandon Jackson in particular. But don't kid yourself this is still an offense that believes strongly in their ability to throw the ball to the outside with some of those matchups that are favorable for them. On third down and 10 Rodgers over the middle floats it Nelson incomplete and good coverage downfield by Dion Grant stride for stride with Jordy Nelson and a punt coming from the Packers. Yeah had a chance Jordy Nelson is just going right down the seam and he was able to get by Dion Grant but a ball that Aaron Rodgers just was not able to lay out far enough for him. Will Blackman a former Packer is out inactive with a bad knee that's flared up on him so Aaron Ross waits for the punt from Maste. These are two teams that really struggle on special teams and that's certainly the case with the Giants and the punting issue they had at the end of the game the 65 yard return by Deshaun Jackson and the loss at home to the Eagles. Here's the offense for the Giants. Eli Manning is knocking on the door of 30 touchdown passes on the season and it's Sean O'Hara anchoring the center of that offensive line second straight week and those interior guys for the Giants last week they struggled against that defensive front of the Eagles but they're going to they're going to have to be able to run the football this is a this is a Packers defense very difficult to throw the ball against play action to start the day Manning has plenty of time as he moves to his right and the pass is caught by Hakeem Nix. Nix made the catch got his feet down headed out of bounds and has a first down. Well thrown ball there by Eli Manning right along the sideline Hakeem Nix comes down keeps his feet in play. On first down Brandon Jacobs. A nice run of five A.J. Hawk on the stop. I think the question has to be here early. Eli Manning with the 28 touchdown passes. He's also tied a career high with 20 interceptions. A very aggressive defense that Dom Capers runs for this Green Bay Packers. Can Manning avoid the mistakes? Use that run game. And he's coming off a four touchdown afternoon against the Eagles. Second and five. Here's Bradshaw on the right side knocked out of bounds near the first down marker by Charlie Pepra. Former draft pick of the Giants. Here's the defense. They run a 3 4 and there's the guy with all the hair Clay Matthews who has 12 and a half sacks this season. I know they were real excited about the fact Clay Matthews actually got to practice some this week. He's been limited during the week because of a shin injury over the last four to five weeks of the season. And not that it's impacted him that much on Sunday but they feel that the extra work this week in practice should help him here this afternoon. It's third down and one and it's Ahmad Bradshaw who plows forward for a first down. Ahmad Bradshaw is not a big guy he's 5'9", 198. But he is now six of eight in picking up first downs on third and one carries. Yeah, and what did Dom Capers tell us just the other day that Ahmad Bradshaw is the guy that really scares him the most as far as the skill players for the New York Giants, primarily because he knows they've got to be able to slow down this running attack of the New York Giants. And Ahmad Bradshaw, you can do everything right, but yet he has the ability to bounce it backside. Here he is on the outside, left side, and he is brought down by Matthews. A gain of one. Well, the other thing Ahmad Bradshaw hasn't done here over the last four ball games is put the ball on the ground. And you know, for those Giant fans, they're certainly aware of it. But yeah. that's one of the that's one of the reasons why he lost his starting job to Brandon Jacobs. That's the longest stretch that he has had this season not fumbling here in the past four games. How many Giants fans are at home saying, thanks, Aikman? <laughs> Second down and nine and a penalty flag is thrown for a false start. False start number 88 offense five yard penalty. It's still second down. Well we welcome. 
welcome a new audience maybe two joining us here as we are in the early going Green Bay had a one first down on the opening possession then had to punt. Now the Giants have it quick first down throw to Hakeem Nix a first down carry by Ahmad Bradshaw in what is in essence a playoff game. Here in week 16. All day the pass at the ankles of Ahmad Bradshaw who picks up five and a half. Desmond Bishop on the stop. Well that gives you an idea right there as to how good this Packers secondary can be because Eli Manning had great protection on that play and and had a chance to really survey the field and yet still nobody was able to come free and he had to come underneath. The secondary does a good job. They, they mix in the zone along with their man to man coverages but when they lock up man coverage they're, they're still awfully hard to get loose from. It's third and nine. Fake the handoff, hit Manningham. Looking to run for the first down, he won't get it. Forced out by Tremont Williams, a gain of only five. And so Matt Dodge will come out for the first time since we last saw him. Last time he was on camera, he was getting yelled at by his head coach, Tom Coughlin. For not kicking it out of bounds instead to Deshaun Jackson for that game winning touchdown. Well this had to be the longest week of his life. Good snap. And the punt is just shanked. Went off the side of his foot. And they're going to mark it at the 20. Wasn't pretty. Ball went out at the 20. Packers have it second time. No score. Today's game is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. After that punt by Matt Dodge, Tom Coughlin a little more gentle this time going over to talk to Matt Dodge. who had a 25 yard punt. It did go out of bounds. That's the punt he was looking for last week. Yeah, seven days too late. <laughs> Fake the handoff. Rodgers time over the middle. Jordy Nelson. Jordy Nelson inside the 20. Touchdown Green Bay. Green Bay Packers go shotgun formation. Watch what play action does to him right here. It keeps him looking in the backfield. And you see it's Antrell Roll, and then he's in a trail position because they've got the two deep safeties. The middle of the field is what's open. Jordy Nelson's able to get by Roll and then just out Deion, outrun Deion Grant for the touchdown. Welcome back, Aaron Rodgers. Welcome into the seats, Jordy Nelson. Seven nothing. Number 87 goes 80. It's a career long for Jordy. First points to the pack here at home. Today's game is sponsored by Bud Light. It's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. Eighty yard touchdown throw to Jordy Nelson as I mentioned a career long for Jordy. It was a great complimentary receiver to the top two guys Donald Driver Greg Jennings they go four deep really with Nelson and James Jones. And now DJ Ware waits for the kick from Crosby with the Giants down seven. From outside the five. Where suffers one hit, keeps on plugging to the 30. Take a break, come back. 24 yard return. We've already had a Lambo leap as the Packers lead it 7 0. 
Today's game is sponsored by Pizza Hut. Your favorite plays deserve your favorite pizza. Your favorites, your Pizza Hut. By Sprint, the Now Network. And by Salt, now on Blu-ray and DVD, also on digital download. Shots from inside the Packer Hall of Fame inside Lambeau Field, which is a year-round facility. That's the side judge, James Coleman, who has pulled a leg muscle, so he's on the sideline. We are one official down, and now the Giants down 7-0 start at their 30. Looking for that back shoulder throw. It's not there. Coverage by Tremont Williams on Knicks. Here's Kurt Menefee for a game break. Well, Chicago's Chris Harris picked off Mark Sanchez in the game's final minute, so the Jets lose 38-34 at Chicago, but it didn't matter. They still clinch a playoff spot because the Redskins won in overtime. Graham Gano's 31-yarder after a David Garrard interception won it 20-17. The Jets have loss and it's the Jets' the playoff spot. Joe Troy and Pam. What a game at Soldier Field. Bears are here next Sunday. Here's Brandon Jacobs. What a play on the edge, Clay Matthews. That is bringing down all 6'4, 264 pounds with a lot of room to move if he got past 52. Well, look at the job that he does here on Bear Pasco. He plays the block very well with his eyes in the backfield, comes off of Pasco. And then is able to bring Brandon Jacobs down in the backfield. That's a great job. A lot of times against great pass rushers, there's a belief that you can run the ball right at them. They try here against Matthews, and they lose yardage. Third down and 11. Protection for Manning over the middle. Picked off. Tremont Williams. Looking for Knicks. Another Manning interception. And the return by Williams. Interception number 21. A new career high for number 10. Sixth of the year for Williams. And an early turnover in Green Bay. Coming off a game in which he tied his career high with four touchdown throws against the Eagles with all that good comes some bad this year and a lot of it 26 times. Eli Manning's turned the ball over career high and the most interceptions in the NFL. And so the Packers up by seven take over. At the giant 44. Dimitri Nance in a tailback and he gets it running right. You go back and take a look at that interception. They're going to put Desmond Bishop because it was third and long to try to keep from giving up any easy completion. But a miscommunication here. You see Akeem Nix, he wasn't even expecting the ball. It looked like he was going to try to run a double move. But Eli Manning, he's thinking square in and he. If that was going to be the route, this was a well thrown ball. But instead, Tremont Williams keying into the backfield, he's able to come off of Knicks for the easy interception. Second down and four. Here's Nance again. And Dimitri has a Green Bay first down. So here's the Giants' defense, Troy. They're coming off that collapse in the fourth quarter. They've given up an 80 yard touchdown throw to Jordy Nelson. Now the turnover, they're backed up again in a game where they basically have to win. I know that the Giants can get in even if they lose today. There's Perry Fuel, defensive coordinator for New York. But this is a game the Giants have got to win, and they are climbing uphill already. Now Brandon Jackson, good play by Tuck, and a loss of one. I think you raise a good point there, Joe, because you wonder, you know, where is exactly the confidence of this defense, and where are they at coming into this game? I know Perry Fuel and visiting with him, I thought he did a nice job in last week's game against the Eagles. Those players were in a position 
to make plays. He continued to maintain aggressiveness throughout that game last week. He brought the blitz, something that was very effective for him in the first half against the Eagles. But they had an absolute meltdown there in the fourth quarter. And then to come into this game and give up the big touchdown reception to Jordy Nelson the way they did, they can't afford to give up another one here. Set up a screen for Brandon Jackson. And Jackson takes it down inside the 25, a gain of 10. Antrill roll on the stop. Third and short coming up. It was set up well there by by the Packers and Darren College. We talk about it each time we we have a Packers game. You know, they run the screen plays very well, and there's a lot that goes into that. A lot of times, even as a defense, when you anticipate the screen, it's it's hard to stop them because of the timing that's involved between the offensive line and then the tailback. On third down and one, John Cohn will fight for the first down. And much like Ahmad Bradshaw on the other side, Kuhn is now seven for eight, carrying it, picking up a first down on third and one. Well, they bottom him up, but he just keeps his legs going. I mean, he's short of the first down at that point. That's just a great individual effort by John Kuhn. is knocked into the air incomplete. It's an incomplete pass not a catch and fumble Corey Webster made the play on Greg Jennings. Well Greg Jennings talk about a guy who benefited a lot when Jermichael Finley went down you know earlier in the year through the first five games Greg Jennings only had 14 receptions and then in the last 10 ball games he's had over 50 catches he's been He's been the recipient of a lot of balls once Drew Michael Finley went down for the year. Four wide receivers set on second and ten. Aaron Rodgers doing what he does so well. Slides at the five for the first down. They're going to mark him back toward the six. First down Green Bay. Well this is going to be a heck of a matchup for the Packers trying to slow down Justin Tuck he gets pressure but Aaron Rodgers is able to escape inside and I know Packer fans are glad to see this Aaron, he goes he gives himself up something I'm not real sure he would have done a couple of weeks ago he said he was going to maintain his aggressiveness as a runner that's a very smart play on his part first and goal. That's Crabtree in the backfield with Rodgers handoff to Jackson. And Jackson takes it to the three. Aaron Rodgers you know so much talk about the concussions he said this needs to continue being a reactionary sport for me and I'm not going to take I mean that's a huge weapon his legs and what he does in extending plays and manufacturing something out of nothing that that's a big part of why he's been so successful. Yeah, he's got over 300 yards rushing on the season. He's the second leading rusher on the team. There's no doubt that he's very effective when he tucks it. Second and goal and he sprints left. And fires incomplete. Had a man Jennings in and out of his hands. Third and goal. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers, I think, is upset with himself on that one because initially it looked like Rodgers was going to have to be pretty aggressive with that throw, but as it turned out, he didn't have to throw it nearly as hard or make it nearly as difficult on Greg Jennings as he did. You know, Aaron Rodgers going back to his scrambling, he said, Hey, you know, I slide about 95% of the time, and I'm going to continue to slide about 95% of the time. So he's at least trying to tell himself that not a lot is going to change. Regardless of the head injury. Giants defense needs a stop. And a timeout is taken by Green Bay. Third and goal when we come back. A big down for this Giants defense. Third down and goal. And a quarter that's been dominated by Green Bay. Rodgers 
Buys time. Touchdown, Green Bay. James Jones. Given Balaga much help on the outside. They talked like they were going to coming into this game, but that's a couple times now Justin Tuck has gotten pressure off the edge. You're going to see him here. But then Aaron Rodgers is able to duck it, get back to the outside. James Jones does a great job of running that route. Starts on a spin move, realizes Rodgers is in trouble, makes another move to get separation. The Tremont Williams interception is turned into seven. You see this route by James Jones. He's in the slot. And he does the pivot route there, but he starts upfield, and that's what then created the separation on Kenny Phillips. Once he looked like he was going to go to the back line, he came off of that and gave Aaron Rodgers a nice place to go with the ball. But that's where Aaron Rodgers is so dangerous, especially out in the open field but even down in the red zone if he gets pressure off the edge he's able to step up and then he's very good at sliding out to his play side and keeping his eyes down the field and finding an open receiver you see it time and time again with Aaron Rodgers to look at the big picture Troy coming into this season so many picked the Green Bay Packers as one of the teams to beat, not just in the NFC but in the NFL Overall, they've had one injury after another. They're coming into this game having lost two straight. But with the kind of weapons they have on the outside, they've gone to Jones and Jordy Nelson in this game, lead 14 to nothing. Rodgers is back. Defense has played well all season long. This is still a dangerous Green Bay team. DJ Ware from the 15 out across the 30. There's not a game that the Packers go into where they don't feel that they've got a definitive advantage on the outside with their skill players. And, and that's as you say, Joe, even without a guy like Jermichael Finley. I mean, when you trot out Greg Jennings, Donald Driver, Jordy Nelson, James Jones, that's a, that's a nice group of receivers that even with the defensive backs that the Giants have, who I think are very good, you start to create some real matchup problems. Six starters from the opening day lineup are on IR for the Green Bay Packers. But they are in a good position with a win here today if they can get it over the Giants. That pass broken up. Hakeem Nix and Tremont Williams, who already has an interception, was there defending for Green Bay. Yeah, this secondary, I mean, they, they really are a bunch of ball hawks. They've got guys that when the ball's in the air, a lot of times defensive backs don't play the ball that well and receivers then have an advantage but against this Packers secondary Tremont Williams Charles Woodson Nick Collins those guys are very good at going after the ball in flight. Here is Ahmad Bradshaw picks up three B.J. Raji was there and B.J. Raji is starting to come on he had two sacks at New England last Sunday night and this is a defense that started six different guys at outside linebacker and that's no different today the trend continues as Robert Francois first year player out of Boston College gets the start at right, right outside linebacker Yeah, and they're without Colin Jenkins today as well and yet it's still early but in the early going this Packers defense has done a good job slowing down the Giants running game third and seven. Time running out for Eli Manning. Slides along the line of scrimmage and throws it away. Great coverage downfield by the Green Bay secondary. It was great coverage again on the outside. They've been playing a lot of man coverage. This time on third down, they go zone. Eli Manning had a lane inside, and it looked like if he had been more decisive when he took off, you're going to see the room that he has there to run. That he might have been able to pick up that first down. Instead, it's a punt from Dodge, who hits a good one. Back to the 10. Good punt from Matt Dodge. Giants needed it. And on the return, Tremont Williams can't get much. 55 yard punt. And a fight breaks out along the Giants' sideline. 
Just a four yard return after that 55 yard punt. And here it is out on the outside. Bush and Underwood with Michael Coe, third year free agent out of Alabama State. And the special teamers start to knock it around. So with 34 seconds left, Green Bay up 14 to nothing. And they have the ball back at their own 13. You know, Dom Capers, when, when we visited with him, he said that even though their defense had given up a lot of yards on the ground, that when they have played the run, that he's been pretty happy with the job they've done. And he knew that that was going to be important coming into this game. And so far, he's been right. I mean, they've, they've been playing the run, and they've been able to slow it down. Here's Jackson right side. Picks up four. And that could be the final play of the opening quarter here at Lambeau Field. Again, the Giants win here today, and they are in the playoffs. Green Bay Packers trying to get a win, and then they have their eye on the Chicago Bears, who will play here in Green Bay next Sunday, trying to stamp their ticket for the postseason. That's the end of one, 14 to nothing. Packers on top. Good start, Green Bay. The NFL on Fox will continue after a word from your local Fox station. You look at the playoff implications for Green Bay. If they lose, they're finished. For the Giants, if they win, they're in. Giants can still get in if they lose here today, but they would need help. Second down at six. Rodgers, as we start the second quarter, fires a strike to Jennings first down. If the Giants lose, they can get in the playoffs by beating Washington next week. They play against the Redskins on the road. And they would need Chicago to beat Green Bay here next week. Or if Tampa Bay beats Seattle and New Orleans and have New Orleans lose to Atlanta. So it's all set up. Well, this is in essence a playoff game for these two teams here today. Rodgers throws no penalty flag was still behind the line of scrimmage in the pass behind Jordy Nelson. Well, one of the things I've really liked so far from what I've seen of the Green Bay Packers offense is the balance that they have shown here in the early going. I mean, Mike McCarthy will be the first one to tell you that even though they haven't run the ball all that well this season, that it's not so much about yardage gained as much as it is rushing attempts. And last week, in, in that Disappointing loss to the New England Patriots. They had a season high 38 rushing attempts, and they've continued with that here in this one. Here's pressure on Rodgers, who just throws it at the feet of Brandon Jackson. It's third and ten. And pressure from Michael Boley, the weak side linebacker, coming and was in the face of Aaron Rodgers. Third down and ten. You know, Perry Fuel said that last week the thing that he did not want to do. In the second half of that game, especially there in the fourth quarter, was give the impression to that defense that that they were going to play prevent defense and just let up and get away from what they had done there in that first half that was so successful. And so they continued to blitz. And that's something that he believes strongly in. And they're continuing to mix in a lot of those types of things here in this game. On third down, Rodgers steps up, throws over the middle, and the pass is knocked away. Bowley got his hands on it. Pass intended for James Jones, and now the defense for the Giants makes a stop. It's fourth down. That's a nice stop there by the defense of, of the Giants. You know, obviously down 14 points, can't afford to, to give up any more points. And, and by stopping them where they did, the Giants now offensively should be afforded pretty good field position on this next drive. Maste with the punt it's a line drive Ross to his left from inside the 30. Good punt returner at Texas and he doesn't have much room here. First guy down there Francois 
Just a four yard return. Tom Coughlin trying to get his troops up after that crusher last week. He and the Giants trail 14 zip. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by Taco Bell. Think outside the bun by GMC. It's the GMC holiday event. Get the job done right this season with the GMC Sierra and by the United States Air Force. Snapshots from our little group weekend here in Green Bay. 14 to nothing Packers. Defense is allowed just 35 yards, only two first downs, and they have a takeaway. Delayed handoff, Brandon Jacobs. Tries the left side and picks up two. If you think about Eli Manning, when he came to the Giants, he was traded from San Diego back in 2004. And when he joined this team, he was Archie's kid, he was Peyton's little brother. He came in with veterans on the club. Including guys like Tiki Barber and Shockey and other guys. Now he's the old guy, and they have younger skilled position players. He stood up in front of the team on Monday after that defeat at home against Philadelphia. First time he had done that as leader of this team, and it's on him now to try and get this offense and these Giants back in the game. Knicks into Green Bay territory. Big completion to number 88 for 18 yards. Well, Clay Matthews, as you would imagine, he's going to attract a lot of attention there in pass protection. They've got two guys on him, Bear Pasco helping out right tackle Kareem McKenzie, and this was a nice route by Hakeem Nix, right in the void in that zone coverage, in behind the corner and in front of the safety. I tell you, though, right now, if the Giants don't begin to run the ball any better than they have, it's going to be a tough day for this offense. Just got it away on first down pass complete. That's Hagan. And Derek Hagan spins around and gains eight. A.J. Hawk downfield on the stop. Yeah, Hagan, a guy who has had to be relied upon, you know, after the injury to, to Steve Smith and then when Akeem Nix was down a few weeks ago. And you know he's better as an outside receiver but when Steve Smith went down he's had to play a little bit more in the inside position and and that's a void that they really have had a hard time filling since Smith went down. Second down and two Manning has it batted away Bishop made the play and a flag is down in the secondary. And it's against Green Bay. It'll be an automatic first down. Bishop is trying to say that the pass was tipped. It was a legal contact downfield. Yeah, I think the contact, the contact it looked to me, Joe, occurred before Bishop got a hand on the ball. At the top of the route. Before the ball was tipped, illegal contact, number 21, defense. Five yard penalty, first down. You can see at the top of this route against Akeem Nix, Charles Woodson, who plays very physical. And here's a good look at it because at the top, you see the grab by Charles Woodson and then the deflection by Desmond Bishop. That's a good job by this officiating crew recognizing when the contact took place relative to when Bishop got his hands on the ball. Yeah, tip ball would have nullified it if it happened after it, but it's an automatic first down. Just inside the Green Bay 37. Getting absolutely wide open is Nix for the touchdown. A blown coverage. Woodson fell down. And Nix was there wide open to take it in for the score. 36 yards and a big one for New York. Well, that was huge. Charles Woodson, he fell down. You know, he comes up, and that's the problem. When you come up and you try to get a jam on a receiver, you got to be real careful not to miss. He didn't miss, but Akeem Nix with a good release, and once he then got to the outside, Charles Woodson slipped. That's a nice adjustment there by Akeem Nix with a ball that, that could have been a lot easier dealt. 
Well that was exactly what the Giants needed here on the road in a game they need. And Knicks off his hip a juggle and then into the end zone for the score 36 yards seven point game. Hi Kevin Sean Bojanowski from Southwest Asia. Just want to wish my wife Carmen my kids Riley Avery and Kaden happy holidays and daddy be home real soon. A nice message from Captain Sean and we'd like to welcome the men and women in uniform serving around the world watching today's broadcast in 175 countries on AFN the American Forces Network. Thanks for all you do and we hope you're enjoying today's telecast on this Sunday after Christmas as Sam Shields waits for the kick in what is now a seven point game times. Who was a hero here in the NFC Championship game in overtime 35 months ago bounces it Shields on the return penalty flag is thrown as Shields couldn't make it back to the 20 but there is a marker down. During the return, holding number 21, receiving team, half the distance to the goal. Correction, number 24, half the distance to the goal, first down. So they get Jared Bush, and that takes them closer to their own end zone. And you talk about the Giants getting exactly what they needed there moments ago on that touchdown to Hakeem Nix, and now we'll see Aaron Rodgers go back to work. Yeah, you know, you look at the start of this game, it looked like the Giants just came out and were kind of going through the motions a little bit, and yet they weathered the first punch by Green Bay. That was a huge offensive possession there by the New York Giants. And, you know, this defense on that last possession for them did a good job slowing down the Packers' offense, and now they're going to need another stop here. Blitz coming from the Giants. Packers pick it up, and the pass caught. Jennings out across the 25 for 17 yards. Well, they're going to come from the, the offense's right side, and Quinn Johnson steps up and, and is able to get a block, and, and then Aaron Rodgers hangs in and throws the slant route, but Webster does a good job on the tackle here because if he's not able to make that play, and Greg Jennings, not the easiest guy to get to the ground. He's off and running for a touchdown. Brandon Jackson, not much room to run. He makes the most of it, gets two. He went around human Europe. And it will be second down for Green Bay. Aaron Rodgers, since he took over as the starter in 2008, across the NFL, is number four among quarterbacks in passing yardage. Number four in completions, number four in touchdown passes, number four in quarterback rating, and he replaced number four. Brett Favre here in Green Bay, second and eight. Good protection again. Wide open passes caught. Jennings. Ball comes out. They're saying he was down in a completion of 19 yards. Well, the Packers are going to overload one side offensively. They're going to put Greg Jennings in as the single receiver on the backside, short side of the field. And anytime that happens and the Giants go single coverage, Aaron Rodgers is going to throw it to that side, whether it's Greg Jennings or James Jones or anyone else on single coverage to the short side of the field, an easy completion. Dimitri Nance gets it and gets nothing. Back to the line of scrimmage. We go for a game break. Here's Kurt Menefee. Well, Tampa Bay and Seattle play out possibilities for each team, although Tampa's more remote. Josh Freeman hooking up with Kevin Winslow, 10-yard score. And right now, Tampa Bay has a 10-7 lead over Seattle, who needs to win to keep pace with St. Louis and set up a winner-take-all matchup next week in the West. Joe Troy and Ben. And you look at the young quarterback who has really had a Breakout season for Tampa Bay. Freeman. As they stay alive in the south. There's that back shoulder throw and James Jones spinning can't make the catch. You know offenses and quarterbacks in particular have gotten so good 
at throwing that back shoulder fade that you know, I mean you really can't stop it as a defensive back you play over the top trying to keep a receiver from going deep on you and the timing if it's good is impossible then to slow down James Jones had a chance there to make that play he's just unable to to bring it in but it was actually good coverage by Terrell Thomas. Third down and ten blitz coming quick throw completion Jones first down. Inches inside the giant 40 12 yards to number eighty nine. Well they bring pressure and then Corey Webster knowing that he's up against a fast guy in James Jones you've got to respect that so in order not to give up then the big play you're giving up a big cushion you know on the slant route. Here's Nance. Ball comes out. Nance was down after a gain of five. Terrell Thomas on the stop. Dimitri Nance, who was picked up off the practice squad of the Atlanta Falcons, has been kind of flipping back and forth with some of the extra carries that Starks also has been a part of, and James Starks is inactive here today for the Packers. Yeah, and so much of that decision then goes into who's going to be able to help out the most on special teams. I know a lot of people wonder, you know, how the decision is made as to who's going to be carrying the ball when Jackson's not. Well, that's what it is. Who can help out most with special teams play? On second and five, here's Jackson. And Brandon picks up two. Talked about the day that the Packers had running the football last Sunday night at New England, 143 yards on the ground. Here are the offensive leaders in the day for Aaron Rodgers so far. After missing the second half of the Lions game and all of last week, out with a concussion, second one suffered this season. Third and three. First down, Donald Driver with his left hand. Four yards and a first down. Well, they've been throwing the slant. So now you see Aaron Ross. He's playing inside leverage because he's trying to take away the slant. Donald Driver then runs the out route. That is a great catch by Donald Driver. I know Donald Driver's been battling through some nagging injuries throughout the season. He's had six consecutive 1,000 yard reception. Seasons that's not going to happen this year, but he is as tough as they come in a nice catch. That is six different receivers. Aaron Rodgers has found for a completion here with six minutes left in the first half. Here's Jackson for two over the left side. And what talking with Mike McCarthy and, and he felt that that last week's performance by Brandon Jackson was you know right up there amongst. One of the best of, of his career. You know, so much was made of the loss by the by the Giants this past week, but that was a disappointing loss for this Packers team as well. Play action to Nance. Rogers spins out of trouble and now just throws it away. Pressure in the end by Canty. Human Yura. It was the first guy there, third and eight coming up. Well, that pressure by Human Yura saved the touchdown because Donald Driver ran right through the middle of that secondary uncontested. And you can see if Aaron Rodgers had had time, he's able to find Donald Driver right away in an easy touchdown. And here's the spin move, little Dwight Freeney. By OC Human Yura. You know, every time anybody runs a spin move, it's a Dwight Freeney <laughs> move. Well, Aaron Rodgers had a Dwight Freeney of his own. It's coming. Third and eight. Jordy Nelson. Lost the football. Tuck is there and he's on top for the Giants. Another takeaway for this Giants defense. They came in with a most in the NFL. Nelson made the catch. 
Aaron Ross knocked it out. Tuck recovered. Giants have it down seven. Today's game is sponsored by Visa. More people go with Visa. This Giants defense takes it away. It was a very good drive for Green Bay before the turnover. It started at the Packer 10. 72 yards later, Jordy Nelson coughed it up. From the 15, down by seven. Eli airs it out for Manningham. What a catch. Off he goes. Got behind Williams. And we're an extra point away from a tie game. 85 yards for the Giants. And Mario Manningham has his eighth touchdown of the year. I was talking earlier about how well these Packers players in the secondary play the ball in the air but this time Mario Manningham he just went up and got it. You know, Tremont Williams was never able to locate the ball in the air. It was one on one a lot of times you'll see an offensive coordinator in this case Kevin Gilbride try to take a shot down the field after a quick change of possession. They take it on the outside one on one and Mario Manningham makes the play. Bad snap good hold. It has been 47 years since a Giants quarterback has thrown as many as 30 touchdown passes in a season. After the fumble by Jordy Nelson, recovery by Justin Tuck, Manningham 85 yards, 30 touchdowns for Eli Manning, and we're tied at Lambeau Field. That 85 yarder to Mario Manningham is the longest completion of Eli Manning's career. And for the Giants, their longest offensive play this season. It again takes Eli Manning to 30 touchdown throws here in 2010. It's been 47 years since the Giants quarterback has thrown as many as 30. Franchise record Y.A. Tittle with 36 back in 63. Tittle again. The number two spot with 33 and 62. Then it was Fran Tarkenton in 67 with 29. Manning is in front of him now with 30. On a hop at Shields. Looking for somewhere to go. Using that good speed. And out of bounds at the 20. Blackburn forced him out. Well, American Idol returns with a two-night season premiere. New judges. Steven Tyler and Jennifer Lopez join Randy Jackson and Ryan Seacrest for a new season of extraordinary talent. TV's biggest phenomenon is almost here. American Idol now on Wednesdays and Thursdays beginning January 19th on Fox. I just find it remarkable that Y.A. Tittle was the record holder for most touchdown passes in a season. I mean, that was that kind of tells you this was a passing league. At one time before everybody started talking about running the football and stopping the run. Here is a handoff to Brandon Jackson who broke loose for a moment picked up five. I thought you were going to ask me about. J-Lo or Steven Tyler becoming judges on American Idol instead I get Y.A. Tittle and all the. 36 <laughs> touchdown passes J-Lo Y.A. Tittle. Sorry to disappoint. No, it's okay. <laughs> Second down and five. Quick slant, Jennings. At times, Troy, the Packers can make it look so easy. And Greg Jennings on the near side gains 11 and a first down. Yeah, and. and, and Cushion again by by Corey Webster and you know this was one of those to where Aaron Rodgers recognizes the soft coverage and then he comes up and throws the ball no one else knows just him and the wide receiver the offensive line doesn't know the running back doesn't know it was a running play that was called and you just pop up get it out before there's any lineman downfield and you get a nice gain out of it four catches for Jennings that last one for 11. Rodgers with time shows off his arm strength. There's Jennings on the other side inside the 40. That's just a great route by Greg Jennings. 
This is the wide side of the field this time. This means Aaron Rodgers probably has to throw this ball 35 yards to get it across the field. But a nice job at the top of that route, pushing him off with speed, and then coming right back, working back to the quarterback and giving a nice throw and a nice target to Aaron Rodgers. Blitz coming from the Giants. Here's Driver. And he is driven into the ground by Terrell Thomas. And they're going to flag Terrell Thomas for too much after the tackle. Thomas, who's become one of the better cornerbacks in the NFC, walked right through Driver after the tackle. You saw Terrell Thomas. He was acting as play. if. Personal foul, number 24, defense. 15-yard penalty, first down. Now you saw Terrell Thomas. He was trying to show the official that the driver went to his face mask, and he did, but it wasn't until after Terrell Thomas had driven him into the ground. I, I think that's a good call by the official. A little bit excessive there. I think more frustration than anything else because this Packers passing game has, has been pretty good here in the early going. It's a six yard completion plus the 15 yards. 21 yard pickup and field position. It takes it to the 16. Here's Jones. Sure tackle by Webster after a gain of eight. Two and a half to go. Green Bay with two timeouts. The Giants have all three of their timeouts remaining. Well, Aaron Rodgers, prior to the injury against Detroit, this guy was absolutely on fire. He had thrown 11 touchdown passes, only one interception, and that should have been a touchdown to Greg Jennings on a deep post in that Detroit game, but it came off his hands and was intercepted. And I asked Mike McCarthy about it. He said he's looked just as good in practice this week, and he fully expected to come out and play well and boy has it. Yeah, he's looked just as good here in this game against the number two defense in the NFL. Two minute warning at Lambeau. The number 10 red zone offense and scoring touchdowns goes to work. They've played a lot in New York territory in this first half. Second and two. Under two to go, John Kuhn. Touchdown. You see John Kuhn saying, let's go, let's go quick, let's check and see if his knee was down before he got it across. Knee is down there. And he's right there at the goal line. You could see him winding that finger saying, let's go, kick the extra point. Don't allow any time for a booth review. And it's a seven-point Packer lead. I'm not real sure Tom Coughlin would have challenged that to begin with, but that's just a great push by that offensive line. You see left guard Darren College along with Scott Wells and then Josh Sitton at right guard. And you know, all across the board, just did a good job of getting that defensive front for the for the Giants moving backwards. Yeah, that right knee was down, and it looked like he would have come up, or would have been ruled anyway, a little bit short of the goal line. It would have been a booth review. That is the third rushing touchdown of the season for John Kuhn. And for the Green Bay Packers, all that talk about their run game, they came in with only five rushing touchdowns all season. Fewest in the NFL. Meanwhile, their head coach, Mike McCarthy, said our playoffs started when we got on the plane to come home from New England. They got out to a 14 to nothing lead here early against the Giants. A quick strike after the turnover to tie it at 14, and then the Packers take it right down the field to go up by seven. D.J. Ware slides down, fell down before he was hit.
We were here 35 months ago or so for the 2007 NFC Championship game minus one wind chill minus 12 Tynes missed a field goal with four seconds left and Brett Favre in his last year with the Packers through the overtime interception and Lawrence Tynes hit that 47 yarder to send Tom Coughlin's team to the Super Bowl. Tynes foot was black and blue all week after kicking that rock hard football best bruise he's ever had. Three timeouts left for New York. A minute 50 to play in the half. Good protection from Manning who finds Ahmad Bradshaw. Gets a block. And Bradshaw hangs on to that hit from behind. And speaking of getting hit, Eli Manning was hit on that six yard completion. Well, it just got smothered. You know, right at the end of that play, but give him credit getting the ball out to Bradshaw at the last minute. Second and four. Pass is dropped by Boss. Minute 21 to go. Clock is stopped. Third and four. Visa halftime coming up with Kurt Terry, Howie Michael, and Jimmy. Talk about that Seattle Tampa Bay game and the wild NFC West finish. Rams beat San Francisco earlier today. Well, it's a big third down right here for New York. I mean, the way the Packers are moving the ball here in this first half, you'd hate to give them the ball with this much time and two timeouts before the end of this first half's over. They hand it off to Bradshaw. Good call by Gilbride, and he's got a first down. That yeah, was a good call because clearly when they got the ball, they were going to be aggressive, try to put themselves in a position to get points, but then at third and four, that's a whole different mindset now because of how much time was left. A minute to go. Pass is almost picked off by Collins. Manningham had fallen down. Yeah. Collins and Shields were back there and Nick Collins almost swooped in for the pick. Yeah that was uh, that was the problem there with Manningham because he's got to throw this on time in order to beat the safety with the ball but Manningham fell down at the top of the route. And Nick Collins. And Nick Collins he's got good hands himself you wouldn't know it by that effort. Handoff on second and ten to Bradshaw. Picking his way out across the 40. You're going to mark him down after a gain of seven. And a timeout is taken by the Giants. And as we look ahead to next week, we're all not exactly sure what game will be taken by NBC, what game will be in what window, but we look at a double header day next week. It's week 17. And there are the matchups, including the Bears here against Green Bay, including these Giants at the Redskins, Rams at Seahawks, and what should be a battle for the division winner in the NFC West. Well, I think you laid it out pretty good a little while ago, Joe. I mean, I get tired head trying to figure out what the, what tired the, head. What the playoff situation is. You know, if this team does that, then this has to happen. This right. game's real simple. Giants win, they're in. Packers have to win the next two. Third down and three. Manning backpedaling fires to Boss and it's dropped. And so now, after the Giants took a timeout on third down, there are 41 seconds left. And the Packers will have some time left in the half to get something done. You know, I, th I thought Gilbride managed that situation pretty well too because you know you, like I said you want to be aggressive. You don't want to give them the ball with much time if you have to punt. So he mixed in some of the draws. He called the timeout after the big second down run thinking that OK we got a chance to convert on third. They failed to now you give the ball back to a red hot offense. Dodge hits it. A low punt, but it takes a great Giants bounce. And it'll be tapped down near the 12 near the 12 yard line. 48 yard punt. Michael Coe was down there to touch it for the Giants. And now up by seven, 30 seconds left in the half and two timeouts. 
for Green Bay and another look at their offensive leaders. Yeah, I think that you know with Aaron Rodgers and knowing what Mike McCarthy think you know most coaches in this situation on the 12 yard line you know with 30 seconds to play you just say OK look we're going to go in and be happy with a seven point lead but I'm not so sure that that's what Mike McCarthy's thinking right now. Hand off to Brandon Jackson. He takes it to the 15. That's it. Clock continues to wind and Mike McCarthy it appears is content up by seven at the half. They led by 14 14 to nothing. Giants came back to tie it. Green Bay took the lead on the John Coon touchdown run and we are at the half at Lambeau Field 21 14 pack on top in what is basically a playoff game here in week 16. Stay tuned the NFL on Fox will continue after a word from your local Fox station. Just about to start the second half. 20 degrees now. We started at 25 degrees. How you like me now? How you like me now, Ike? Now you, how you holding up over there? I'm starting I'm to get good. worried about you. No, I'm, doing, I'm doing great. You're not one of the better cold weather weather analysts no, in the game. Well, right? I wasn't a real good cold weather quarterback either. So it was, it was a good first half. I mean, you, you, the Giants could have been dunked here early and they came back and then we've seen Green Bay with Aaron Rodgers back at quarterback they really look good moving the ball. Well they do. I mean Aaron Rodgers he is on fire and, and Eli Manning I think he's played well also I mean he had the one interception but yet you know not getting any more production out of his running game than he is they've been able to create some big plays and stay in this game against the Packers offense who as we have seen has had a really nice first 30 minutes of football. We'll see what happens I mean hey. If you're the Giants, you got to feel pretty good about it right now. Only down seven, in light of the way things went there in that first half. You can follow your favorite team all season long. Just go to iTunes.com/NFL. We need to talk about that Giants running game and that offensive line. The Giants have been shut down twice, running the football by the Philadelphia Eagles. It happened last week with their yards per carry average. The three weeks before. They met the Eagles last week at home. They just tore apart opponents running the ball. Then the week prior to that, Philly shut them down. But there have been changes across that offensive line really all season long. And I want to talk about that when the Giants get the ball here to start the second half. DJ Ware waits for it. Here we go. Second half, Giants down by seven. Right up the gut. D.J. Ware out to the 35 down to the field. Here's Pam Oliver. Well, Joe, Tom Coughlin very specific about his team's goals for this half. Offensively, we need to achieve a better mix between the run and the pass. Defensively, we need to get more pressure on Aaron Rodgers. Mike McCarthy, ironically, with the same goal offensively, the pass-run ratio. Also defensively, he said, we got to stop with those big plays. Back to you. All right, Pam. Pam fighting a cold and weathering through the conditions down on the field a breeze through this stadium 20 degrees it's cold down there Giants started their 35 to the sideline and the pass is broken up but a penalty flag is Manningham was bothered by Tremont Williams. But there might have been contact at the top of this route by Tremont Williams. See, so got, I don't know. It looks like Mario Manningham had as much contact on Tremont Williams as maybe Pass Williams had on him. Number 38, defense. First down. So they get Tremont Williams for pass interference and the spot of the foul that's at the Green Bay 49. Yeah, we heard Pam Oliver talk about Tom Coughlin saying hey we want to be more balanced get the running game going a little bit. The Giants did not have many offensive snaps there in that first half. 
Here's Brandon Jacobs. Jacobs. You just see all these bodies come together, and then that pile just kept moving forward, a six-yard run. Just to give you the numbers, the Giants, prior to last week against Philadelphia, were averaging over six yards per rush and over 180 rushing yards per game. Last week against Philly, they were just shut down. And overall this season, just over 80 yards per game running the ball. Second and four. Jacobs over the right side, and he's tripped up. Had some room to run if he got past that level, a gain of two, third and short coming up. And Troy, I bring it up because you talked to Tom Coughlin on our conference call with him, and you said, what about the center position? Because since Sean O'Hare has come back, and this is only a second game back, they moved Seibert, 69, to left guard. They were rolling with Seibert at center. Well, I think that's the point. Sean O'Hara is an excellent player, but he has missed most of the season due to injury. And because they had been running the ball so well with Seibert at center, but yet they made the decision, struggled last week against the Eagles. And so far in this game, as you said, I mean, they've, they've had a hard time running the ball against the Packers. Direct snap to Bradshaw, who loses it. Recovered by Green Bay. And that's the sixth lost fumble by Bradshaw this season. Bigby has it. Woodson knocked it out. And just a nice play by Woodson. I mean, he, you're going to see him here, and Manningham gets a hand on him. He comes underneath it, and he's able to knock the ball loose then of Ahmad Bradshaw. Fifth forced fumble for Charles Woodson this season. Today's game is sponsored by Southwest Airlines. Find our fares online only at southwest.com. By Bud Light. It's the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. By the Dodge Challenger. Visit your local Dodge dealer today. And by McDonald's. I'm loving it. More from the Packers Hall of Fame in this year-round facility. That is six lost fumbles. Ties for the most in the NFL. Bradshaw put it on the ground in the fifth forced by Charles Woodson. Nelson is ripped out of bounds by Terrell Thomas. Good play by number 24 for the Giants, a loss of two. You see the play by Charles Woodson, and he's just able to fight through the block there by Mario Manningham, but Ahmad Bradshaw had done everything right. He had the ball in his left arm. And for that ball to come loose or for Woodson to be able to get enough on the ball to have it come loose is really pretty incredible because Bradshaw just was I don't want to say careless with the ball but he just wasn't holding it very tight because that should not have happened based on where Woodson was and where the position of the ball was with Bradshaw. Blitz coming second down and 12 Rodgers gets hit and completes it for a first down to James Jones. 13 yards and a first down to Jones. Well, Brandon Jackson, you're going to see he steps up, does a nice job on Bowley, blocks him. Tuck comes around the edge, gets the hit late on Aaron Rodgers. But, you know, Aaron Rodgers has such great confidence in these wide receivers, and rightfully so. James Jones runs a good route on Terrell Thomas, and good timing falls on him when he comes out of his route. One of the few hits that the Giants had put on Aaron Rodgers at the end of that throw. Here's Kuhn to the 35. So if you come into this game talking about concussions for Rodgers, the sacks for the Giants up front, the pressure they can put, especially coming off the edge with Tuck and Yumanura, Rodgers has been knocked down once, hit only twice, and has not been sacked. Second and six. The only thing kept keeping Aaron Rodgers from really being mentioned immediately as one of the best in the game is his postseason success. Rodgers completes to Crabtree. And the tight end who Aaron Rodgers wanted to work more into the offense this week is to the 15. Catch number four on the year for Crabtree. 
pretty tough running after he got the ball and, and you said it you know Aaron Rodgers the other day said I expect Tom Crabtree to have a pretty impactful game for us in this one and I think he said it with a straight face too, Joe because Crabtree prior to this catch here hadn't caught a ball in five games I mean I don't know I don't know what it was that Aaron Rodgers saw but he finally gets his catch in this game. Packers are two for two inside the red zone in this game scoring touchdowns and this one is thrown to an empty spot Rodgers ends up on his back. So that'll be hit number three and Rodgers gets up with a smile on his face. You see Aaron a lot of times when he's in the pocket he, he does throw somewhat awkward with his feet you know he'll jump in the air and throw it or he'll be a little bit off balance when he's when he's making some throws probably looked a lot worse than what it really was. We learned from Brett Favre. Yeah, and you know, and, and you, it's funny you say that because watching him on film, Joe, you know, their styles are a little different. But a lot of the things that Aaron Rodgers does is is a little bit like Brett. And I don't, you know, I don't know if it just happened that way or if it came from watching him for those two years. Second and ten, he guns it, completes it, and the catch is made by Donald Lee. It's only his ninth catch of the season, gain of three. This. Green Bay offense lost a big weapon when Jermichael Finley went down with an E injury week five October 10th at Washington. So now it's Lee Corliss and Crabtree trying to fill that void third and seven. is dropped in and out of the hands of Jordy Nelson who has a touchdown in this game it's fourth down. Well, Rogers tries to stick this one on him and, and he does it's just a little bit behind on the back shoulder but you know it's a ball that's coming at him pretty good not not an easy catch for Jordy Nelson to make but one that he certainly could have but Kenny Phillips drove hard on it. And at least a good stop in terms of forcing Green Bay here to try to settle for a field goal. 31 yard drive by Crosby. Good snap, good hold, good kick. And the lead is 10. Bradshaw fumble. Packers turn it into three points. Today's game is sponsored by Verizon. The signal is yours. Wield it to transmit anything you want. Verizon. As you look at the numbers for Tom Coughlin since taking over the Giants in 04, his record early in the season has been good. His record in November, December has been six games under 500. Last year, a 5 0 start, an 8 and 8 record at the end of the year, so a 3 and 8 finish. As you look at close games, games decided by six points or less, Green Bay has really struggled. Giants have been good in close games. This is a 10 pointer and over the middle it's Bradshaw who's coming off the fumble hangs on and picks up 13 after the catch it's Desmond Bishop on the stop and as you look at the close games and the struggles for Green Bay this season they have six losses by four points or fewer. There are the numbers in six points or less but it's been heartbreak and one play here. One penalty there, one missed opportunity there for Mike McCarthy's team here in 2010. Wide open is Nix. And Keen Nix found a hole in that coverage and picks up 27. You can see Tremont Williams, he's anticipating that they're going to run the quick screen to Ahmad Bradshaw and that Akeem Nix is going to try to block him. And instead, they just change it up. They release Akeem Nix and then throw him the ball. It's a nice change up to that wide receiver screen. In that case, it would have been the running back screen to Bradshaw. Now with the Green Bay 26 in a blink. Here's Brandon Jacobs. Fighting and picking up four. Bishop on the stop. And watch 52 Clay Matthews. He is just always going. And as he told us a couple of weeks ago, he still plays. 
with that walk on mentality he had at USC. He comes from royalty in NFL circles, but he had to prove everything in college and now here with the Packers. Took him four and a half years to get on the field there at Southern California, and he's made up for lost time since arriving in Green Bay. Second and six. Bradshaw. Woodson off the edge made the tackle. And now it's third down. This Charles Woodson is really something else. NFL Defensive Player of the Year last season. We saw the strip fumble on Ahmad Bradshaw on the previous possession. This is a guy who gets in there and does a lot of the dirty work. Rarely will you see that from a cover corner of the caliber of Charles Woodson. Third on the defense in tackles this year behind linebackers A.J. Hawk and Desmond Bishop. Third and four. Looking left all the way now down the middle into the ground for Eli Manning. It's fourth down. And in a 10 point game, Tom Coughlin is going to send the field goal unit on. In what will be roughly a 38 yard try by Tynes, who was the hero in the NFC Championship game on the other end of the field here at Lambeau back in January of 08. Tynes has made 15 straight. High snap. And a good job by Sage Rosenfelds, the holder. 38 yard field goal is good. Offensive coordinator Kevin Gilbride instructing, yelling, upset. It's a seven point game. There's the scoring drive. It nets three points. Two minutes, 46 seconds off the clock. Hakeem Nix with a 27 yard catch helped to set it up. It's a seven point game. 7 10 left here at Lambeau. I know Kevin Gilbride nor the Giants happy with having to settle for a field goal but a good drive nevertheless of at least matching the field goal and keeping this a seven point ball game. Tynes hits it. Shields waits for it from inside the 10 from about the seven. He can fly. Great speed and he crosses the 30. That's it. We'll stay right here. Wilkinson made the tackle on special teams for the Giants. And we go back to that third down try by New York. Yeah, you see the double move there by Derek Hagan. Instead of just running the slant route, he he's putting way too much into that route. And Eli Manning knew he had the coverage that he wanted. He just was waiting for Hagan to win on the route. And Kevin Gilbride clearly upset with Hagan. Hagan, who was part of the final cuts before the season began from the Giants. He signed on the 16th of November, former third round pick by Miami. Driver, what a catch! Well, he's running a post route. Aaron Rodgers just throws a line drive on this one. And Donald Driver lays out and makes a nice play on that ball. 33 yards and a fastball from Aaron Rodgers. One-handed left-handed catch earlier. His 12th year out of Alcorn State, he can still provide a weapon for the Packers on the outside. First down, Rodgers throws. Jennings makes the catch down inside the five to the one. 36 to Jennings. Hey, Tuck has been Beating on the door all day long, just getting there just a tick slow. Rodgers gets it out. Man to man on the outside. Greg Jennings, perfectly thrown ball. And that's the challenge with these wide receivers for the Green Bay Packers. You give them cushion, they run the slants. You come up and press, they go by you. And now it's first and goal. From the one, it's Jackson. Swallowed up. Lost half a yard. First guy there was Linval Joseph. It was a second round pick out of East Carolina. He's active today. 
with Dave Tollison out with a sprained MCL. This is only the fifth game that Joseph has been active here in his rookie season. You know, we talk about these wide receivers for the Packers. Perry Fuel, defensive coordinator for the Giants, talked about it this week. He said this is as good a group at the skill position as really we face all season, or at least since the Cowboys game. As good as the Eagles were last week, this group he felt much better. On second and goal, play action. Rodgers dances out of trouble and throws for the touchdown to Lee. move by Aaron Rodgers to avoid trouble right here. Well and you see where his eyes are. I mean he's able to feel the pass rush escape it and still keep his eyes for the open receiver. Packers up by 14 again. Three touchdown throws from Aaron Rodgers. He hits Donald Lee and celebrates here in Lambeau. Donald Lee gets in on the fun just a four play drive but it covered 70 yards Jennings a 36 yard catch driver had a 33 yard catch and Donald Lee with his second touchdown of the season Jennings now over 100 for the game fifth time he's done that this season Hakeem Nix is going to return the kick from inside the 10. Penalty flag flies as Nix put the ball on the ground. And now the fight for it underneath that pile. Green Bay had an open shot at it. First guy was there was Charlie Pepra. Let's see who it belongs to. There's a flag down. Could be yet another turnover for this Giants team. Nix is trying to tell Tom Coughlin he was down. And Tom Coughlin going for the red flag now. No official signal yet. Well, it gets awfully ugly down there at the bottom of those piles. So they're just trying to peel one guy. Early on the field was a fumble recovered by the kicking team. During the return, holding number 53 of the receiving team, that penalty is declined. First down, Green I, Bay. I think Nix has a point. Yeah, he really does. You see the forearm hits down, and then the ball comes out. And he was hit by Prep Pepper to take him to the ground. Tom Coughlin will challenge it. Remember, there's a penalty on the play. Coughlin hasn't thrown the flag yet. He will. <laughs> I think he's still asking Akeem Nix, are you certain? He was down. Well, he doesn't even want to have to throw it. Just show it to him. New York is challenging the ruling on the field of a fumble in recovery by Green Bay. They'll look at it under the hood. Looked like Nix was down. We'll get the call when we come back. It would be the third turnover by the Giants if the play stands as called. We think it's going to belong to the Giants, the football. Then they'll assess the holding penalty, which threw a flag on during the return by Nix. Nix was hit by Pepper, was going to the ground, forearm down, banging against the grass here at Lambeau Field. Ball popped out. Green Bay recovered, but then a challenge from Tom Coughlin, and Hakeem Nix is begging Coughlin to challenge. And Coughlin's so sick of these turnovers, nobody's given the ball away like the Giants here in 2010. I think that's the bigger thing is Tom Coughlin is you know even back when the Giants were winning you could tell he was just so frustrated with the turnovers 
that they were having offensively and he knew you know eventually hey this is going to catch up with us and, and it has and it did. And then it has in this ball game also. But this one's this one's going to be after reviewing the play the runner was contacted and his right elbow was on the ground and then the ball came loose. He is down by contact at that point. New York is not charged with the timeout. However, we do have a hold on number 55 during the return of the receiving team. That penalty will now be enforced from the 22 yard line, which is the spot of the foul. It'll be first down New York. So the hold on Philip Dillard. And down by 14 points, Eli Manning will be closer to his own end zone. There's Dillard, 55, guilty of the hold on Pat Lee. And it moves the ball back to the Giants' 12. in the Pro Bowl with the way he's played the last two weeks. Well he, he's one on one on Sean O'Hara the center and he's able to get O'Hara off balance get by him and then make the play. You know that inside pressure is a killer for any quarterback especially for a guy like Eli Manning who doesn't have the escapability of some other guys that move a little bit better. That was the first sack by either team. Here's Jacobs. He picks up six. Pick it on the stop. Help from Howard Green, and now a third down coming up for New York. And what's hurt New York in this game is has been what we talked about coming in their, their inability to really control the line of scrimmage and run the football the way that they like to. They've had to rely solely on the right arm of Eli Manning. Matthews was coming off the edge a screen for Bradshaw and a big first down for the Giants Walden on the tackle but a gain of 12 and exactly what New York needed well set up very well you're going to see that Clay Matthews comes off the edge but they're able to get Rich Seibert and then Chris Snee you see two big bodies on then two defenders. And Amon Bradshaw's got a lot of room to run. That's a nice pick up there for the first down. This is a good screen team here with the Giants, as you said earlier, as it applied to the Green Bay Packers offensively as well. Try to combat the aggression of this Packer defense. Manning buys time, rolls right, has the whole right side of the field open, and he runs for a first down. 12 yard carry for Eli Manning. Well, Matthews, he has been close throughout this game, but he tries to take an inside move then on Kareem McKenzie, and he fails to contain on the outside, and that opened up the running lane for Eli Manning. Hopped out of bounds with a 12 yard run. Two and a half to go, third quarter. Giants down 14. Delayed handoff, Brandon Jacobs. Biggest run of the day by the Giants. Ball's knocked out, and it ends up. Boss had a shot at it, and now another scrum. Green Bay has it. Clay Matthews knocked it out. Just a great hustle play by Clay Matthews. You see, I mean, he's expecting pass. He comes up the field, but because he doesn't quit, that's just great effort on his part. He comes up and knocks it out of Jacobs. And there were a lot of guys that had an opportunity to make a play on this ball. You mentioned Kevin Boss. Instead, he reaches down, looked like he tried to pick it up, 
rather than just fall on it. See if this ball stays in bounds. It looks like it does right there. Boss has a wide open shot at it, but tried to pick it up and advance it, as you say, he didn't fall on it. Here's another look. What a play by Matthews. The ball stays in bounds, and it's recovered by Green Bay. Looks like that was De Desmond Bishop that, that kept it in play. It's just great, great hustle by one of the great defensive playmakers who has my vote for defensive player of the year. And that is the third giant turnover in this game. They've given it away 38 times this season. The most in the NFL. And now Tom Coughlin's going to challenge as he throws the red flag. Maybe he thought the ball ended up out of bounds. It's not touched there by anybody out of bounds. Bishop 55 keeps it in. His feet are in. He also was recovered by Green Bay. On the field of a fumble and recovery by the defense. We'll bring Mike Pereira in from Los Angeles. And Mike Pereira, the challenge from the Giants sideline. It looked like that ball stayed in play. What else could there be a challenge for here on this play? Well, Joe and Troy, I think there's two things they're going to look at. Was anybody out of bounds when they touched the ball? And then the last part, did 36 reestablish? Because you see he's out of bounds. Did he reestablish when he to come back in and first to touch? And the answer is clearly yes. So I think if they look at both of those and watch now to see if this ball is touched by anybody. Right. Right. No. There. No. So it's not touched by either the runner or the defender at that point. I mean, Edwards is in bounds anyways, but there you get again, ball still in bounds. And now the only remaining question, did 36, who eventually recovered, did he reestablish? And he did. So this is going to be a ruling on the field confirmed. That was Nick Collins, who ended up on the ball recovering the fumble that was forced by Clay Matthews. And again, I mean, it's. Any giant fan looks at that and says why is Kevin Boss trying to yeah. pick it up and advance it instead of just get on top of the football. Yeah and that's uh, that's the question that I have. I mean the ball's not round. It takes some strange bounces as we know but right there Kevin Boss in a great position just to go down and get it and instead for whatever reason he's trying to pick it up. The Giants have had a couple drives now where they've been moving the ball. Ahmad Bradshaw and now we see Brandon Jacobs after he finally is able to break one up until that point the longest run he had had was seven yards. How about Clay Matthews a pro bowler is a rookie his grandfather Clay was a defensive lineman for San Francisco his dad was a four time pro bowl linebacker his uncle Bruce a 14 time Hall of Fame offensive lineman with the Oilers and Titans. And then this kid has come into the NFL as the second first round pick of Green Bay last year and, and he is one of the most impactful players offense defense you name it that you'll find on the field any given Sunday across the NFL just one of those guys and they're they're rare they're rare on the defensive side but he's one of those guys who you just love to watch play you love to watch a guy who gives it everything he has each and every snap as he does. And we talked about it coming in Joe that Dom Caper said that they were excited about the fact that he had gotten some practice time this week it had been a while and they thought that as good as he's been it would show itself in today's game and boy he made a made a great play there. So we still wait for Walt Anderson to reappear from under the hood meanwhile Aaron Rodgers who in his first two years as a starter is at back to back 4000 yard seasons. Since taking over for Brett Favre at quarterback, he talked about there's been a lack of postseason success. Not his fault. Aaron Rodgers' playoff game last year in Arizona threw for 442 yards, four touchdowns. We'll get the call from Anderson. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field is confirmed. It is a fumble and recovery by Green Bay. New York is charged with its first time out, and this is the second and final challenge for New York for the ball game. Reaction by Brandon Jacobs. 
A three turnover performance by this Giants team offensively. But how about forget the on field numbers and the statistics for Aaron Rodgers, which are terrific. But the way he handled himself with the on again, off again, Brett Favre stuff here. Eventually, Brett Favre said, I want to come back again. They said goodbye. They trade him to the Jets. And Rodgers has been. He's been everything Ted Thompson the GM here could have hoped for and yeah. I think and then so yeah and, and so the Packers and the, the, the Packers fan base they know that they're going to be good for a long time I mean when you have that guy then it's easier to fill in the places or the pieces around him what a luxury to have the quarterback play that that they're going to have by the time this young man's career is done just turned 27 is Dimitri Nance. Takes it to the 30. Two minutes to go in the third quarter. You would still consider Aaron Rodgers a young quarterback. I can't think of really any young quarterback I'd rather have right now. You think of the really young ones like Bradford or the veteran guys like Brady and Manning and some of those guys, but in the middle there is Aaron Rodgers who does everything. And they know they've got a great one. You know, I go back to what Mike McCarthy said to us. I've got a great quarterback. I'm going to march him out on Sunday afternoon and we're going to play aggressive up tempo and let him turn it loose. Second and seven. Here's Nance again. And he is thrown forward across the 35, a run of six. Third down coming up. Here's a game break. Here's Kurt Menefee. Well, the Bucs can still make the playoffs with a little help if they keep taking care of business, and that's what they're doing today against Seattle. But Garrett Blunt, look at that leapfrog for the big man. Runs at 48 yards, set up a touchdown. Right now, the Bucs lead 31 to 7, trying to keep their playoff hopes alive in the fourth quarter. Joe Troy and Pam, regardless of the outcome of this game, Seattle will play San Francisco, or excuse me, St. Louis next week for first place in the NFC West. All right, Kurt, thanks. There's the day for Freeman. Piling up stats, and Aaron Rodgers needs a timeout with a play clock at 1. 47 seconds left in this third quarter. Go down to the field, and here's Pam Oliver. Well, Joe, we're just learning that weather will strand the New York Giants for the second time in three weeks. Those storms in the New York area will prevent the team from leaving tonight as scheduled. They've been working on accommodations all day. I was told this just a little bit ago. It's been speculated all day, but the New York Giants will be spending an extra night in Green Bay. Back to you. All right, Pam. They could always go to Kansas City. Well, I was going to say the night there. Yeah, something tells me they're not going to be sitting around playing board games tonight like they did in Kansas City. No, if they don't come roaring back in this game, they're going to be sitting here in Green Bay thinking about what was here in 2010 after losing that game last week. 28 points scoring in the last seven and a half minutes. And then today, here's a ball coming out. That's a free ball. And instead of what's happened to the Giants, Kuhn is back on top of it for Green Bay. But it is fourth down, and the Giants will get it back, and they have got to go to work. Yeah, they do. And, the, you know, the ball just slips right out of Aaron Rodgers' hand right there. As you see, when he brings it back, you know, there was a time when they had, the quarterbacks were not allowed to come in with old balls. You know, the the older quarterbacks always preferred the older broken in balls and they came right out of the box on game day and you would see that a lot more often in cold weather games but now these teams they can practice with the footballs all week long bring in their own bag of balls that they want to use you don't see it quite as often but that one got away from Rodgers the fourth quarter will begin with a punt from the Packers as they lead the Giants by 14 in Green Bay. Start the fourth quarter in Green Bay. Aaron Ross waits for the punt from Mastic. Gets off a knuckleball. Ross has room to run. And good starting field position for the Giants, who were down by 14 points. Packers have over 400 yards of offense, and the New York Giants have turned it over three times. And here it is. I know the Giants can can still get into the playoffs if they lose here today. 
but they need a lot of help that way. They've got to move the football here in the last quarter. Yeah, here it is. I mean, they got great field position now on this possession. They were able to make the stop that they needed to make against the Packers. And, you know, even though they were able to get the good run there with uh, Brandon Jacobs prior to the fumble, I mean, there's no question that Eli Manning, not easy to do, but he's had some success with some big plays in the passing game. Inside handoff to Amon Bradshaw. And Bradshaw picks up three. B.J. Raji on the stop. You know, when you look at the matchups, as I've said earlier in this ball game, as far as the secondary of the Packers versus this Giants receiving core, you know the Packers are very difficult to throw the football against. But the but the Giants have done a relatively good job with it, and especially creating big plays. Not easy to do, but if they're going to do it here in this game, that's going to have to continue. Eli is going to have to be able to throw the ball and create some separation with these wide receivers because they're just not getting enough even though there's still plenty of time with the running game. Second and seven Eli hit as he let it go and the pass skips in to Derek Hagan incomplete and Manning got hit. He's able to get up and it's third and seven. And who else play Matthews. You know, McKenzie, he thinks that he runs Clay Matthews past Eli Manning, that he has time, and he does. But because Eli is stepping up in the pocket with really nowhere to go with the ball right away, he's holding it just long enough to, to get to allow Clay Matthews then to come in from behind and get the hit and disrupt the throw. Third down and seven. Throws pass incomplete. It's fourth down. There are no flags. Hakeem Nix, the intended receiver, and he and Eli Manning were not on the same page. Not even close. You know, Hakeem Nix is going to the inside. Eli Manning's throwing it to the outside. And, you know, it's these situations when it's clear that Eli's talking to Hakeem as to what it was that he was expecting. But how much of a difference right there would a guy like Steve Smith be making? He was the top third down receiver across the NFL Steve Smith last season. He is out for the rest of the year with an knee injury. On the return, Tremont Williams. He can't make it to the 20 to mark him at the 18. Packers have it up 14 in a game they need here against the Giants. Today's game on Fox is sponsored by the Ford F-150 and its four new engines. This is the future of truck. By State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And by Windows 7. Entertaining a pregame crowd here at Lambeau. That's Green Bay's Big Mouth Band. And joining them is our own Mike Steve Pack. Makes a pretty good meatball, too. He does make a mean meatball. Here's Brandon Jacobs, Jackson rather, over the right side. And a gain of four. The offensive leaders in the day for Brandon Jackson 26 yards, that's it. Jennings has 118 yards, 118 to the 321 that Aaron Rodgers has thrown for. And Rodgers now with 26 touchdowns to go with 10 interceptions this season. Second and six. This is where a team really loves to be able to run the ball with success. Instead, play action. And Rodgers is going to tuck it and pick up a first down. who always seems to have a smile on his face was looking for Greg Jennings but just ran it for a first down. Yeah and that's where you know you get the decision making ability then by Rodgers knows it's not there knows the situation in the game and he takes off and runs with it. You know we talk about them not having a lot of success running the football but yet they've run the ball 23 times in this game. So as we talk about McCarthy staying committed to it. Here's the 24th and it's Brandon Jackson that by the way was the 
21st rushing first down picked up by Aaron Rodgers on that previous play. We look ahead to Fox NFL Sunday next week. Pre-game show at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. It is a doubleheader day here on Fox, and there are the matchups. And this is certainly one of those weeks where you will have to check your local listings for the game and the time in your area. A lot still to be determined. The Packers will host Chicago. And what could be a win in their end situation for Green Bay. Play action from Rodgers. Down he goes. Tuck. Now Justin Tuck he's been knocking on the door today as well and Balaga he's one on one and Tuck just drives him back gets off the block and then is able to make the sack on on Aaron Rodgers and, and Justin Tuck is having or has had himself another great season as hard as it is to believe Justin Tuck he leads the Giants defense in tackles this year as a down lineman I mean that is extremely difficult. For anyone to do, but that's the kind of player that Justin Tuck has been. He's, a, he's an impact guy, and he's had himself a good game in this one, too. 11 sacks. It's third and 15. Timeout, Green Bay. Couldn't get set before the snap. One timeout left for the Packers, and a third and 15 coming up when we come back. Third down and 15. 11 17 left. Four man rush. Jones dropped it. And he had an open path to the end zone if he hung on. Boy, you're not kidding. Aaron Rodgers he, he sees it and knows he's got a shot. I don't think he knew just how good it was going to be. You know James Jones catches out when there is nothing in front of him in the end zone. That could have been the dagger instead. The incompletion leaves 11 12 on the clock. The Giants will get it back. Mastay just got that one away and a fair catch. Called for and hauled in by Aaron Ross. So close to, in essence, ending this one. Jones couldn't hang on. Giants have it. Down 14. Three more turnovers for this Giants team offensively. An Eli Manning interception. Amon Bradshaw fumble. Brandon Jacobs as well. That's only been part of the problem for the Giants. The other part is the Packers have put up over 400 yards of offense and lead by 14. Out of the shotgun, a pocket for Manning, throws for Manningham. Good throw. And that leads Manningham out of bounds, a completion of 21 yards. Boy, that was a great throw there. You know, they run a switch release. Manningham starts on the outside, but he moves to the inside slot position off the release of the ball and then back out to the sideline and just a perfectly placed ball by Eli. This Packer defense, seventh rated in the NFL as Amon Bradshaw carries it to the 40. Picked up two. Here's a game break. Here's Kurt. San Diego fans about to be put out of their misery. Bernard Scott's going to test out for Cincinnati. Bengals lead it right now 34 13 a minute and a half left if this hangs on bar the miracle then San Diego is eliminated from the playoffs Kansas City wins the AFC West Joe. All right Kurt thank you on second down Manning flings it a little shove they're going to throw a flag Hakeem Nix made the catch. But this sure looks like offensive pass interference on Hakeem Nix. Yeah I think that one's coming back. Tremont Williams in coverage and it's against Knicks. You see the push right there and pass interference number 88 offense 10 yard penalty it's still second down. Well, because of where the ball was thrown Joe you know he had a chance to see that the ball was going to be underthrown a little bit Tremont Williams was not looking back at the quarterback and he really didn't have to even use his his hands at all. 
he had just come back to the ball I think he makes the same play on it. You see Tremont Williams I don't think he even knows where the ball is at that point. Wasn't a lot but the official was right there to see the extension eliminates a 33 yard completion. Now second and 18 from the 30. To the sideline intercepted. Sam Shields the rookie. Turnover number four. Eli tries to throw that same ball that he had thrown a couple of plays ago to Mario Manningham along the sideline. Only this time he fails to get it out there and and the DB was running underneath it and just there was just really nowhere to go with it. And remember the Giants cannot challenge. Let's see if he gets them both down that second foot's out of bounds. On the Jacobs fumble Tom Coughlin threw the challenge flag. He didn't win the challenge. He does not have a challenge remaining. And so he can't. Make them look at a replay and reverse that call. Even though it clearly looked like Shields second foot was out of bounds. Rogers throws and completes. Jennings gets right around Webster. 24 yards to Greg Jennings who's had a huge game. Boy well, sure has and, and and here's the play again. You're going to see the right foot comes down but you're right Joe that left foot is out of bounds and to add insult to injury you know the fact that Tom Coughlin had to challenge two plays that were a result of putting the ball on the ground is why he essentially ran out of challenges. Four turnovers for the Giants. Just not much there. Jason Pierre Paul, the rookie, made the stop a gain of two, under 10 to play. And the Green Bay Packers are up by 14, and they are at the giant 20 and a half. We talked about it coming in, Joe, as to how this Giants team was going to play after such a disappointing loss last week. And it hasn't been very good. I mean, it's been sloppy on both sides of the ball. And the things that hurt them early in the year they were able to overcome at different times has plagued them throughout this game. Rodgers keeps it. Pump fake. And then hits Corliss underneath to the five. Now Jason Pierre Paul number 90 because of the the coverage that they had initially he gets locked up with them. He's trying to hold up Corliss from getting out into the route. But the Packers, I mean, Mike McCarthy, he's got this thing dialed in pretty good I'll as a play caller. Tell you what, if they go into the playoffs, as Rodgers has hit a season high throwing it here against the Giants, they'll go in as a wild card, but there won't be a lot of teams that want to line up and play the Packers. As Jackson runs into a wall first guy there was Pierre Paul and we talked about the adjustment that Aaron Rodgers had to make this week because of the helmet. I think he likes that helmet. Well he said I've had a lot of fun and success in my old helmet. Yeah, well, hopefully I'll be able to have the same kind in my new helmet. And he's had a season high. Yeah it even starts looking good when you're thrown for over 300 yards and three touchdowns. Tuck comes out. He was banged up. Second and goal. There'll be other quarterbacks signed up to get that helmet. Well, I don't think that his teammates will be making fun of the way he looks this week. Rodgers. Kill. Touchdown. Receiving touchdown of the season for John Kuhn. Now 
down by 21 are the Giants. Here's the interception that comes with an asterisk from the rookie Sam Shields. John Kuhn is in, and the Packers lead by 21. If the Green Bay Packers win here today and they're up 21 with 6.58 to go, the Giants know what can happen when you're up 21 with around seven minutes left in a ball game. But if the Green Bay Packers win here today, they host the Chicago Bears next weekend in a win against Chicago, their rival, and they're in. DJ Ware drops it, picks it up, drops it. Wow. I mean, this is a mess for the Giants here in Green Bay. They've turned it over four times, and now DJ Ware can't field a kickoff. This February, see NASCAR's biggest race like you've never seen it raced before. As the sport's best drivers meet at the newly paved three wide international speedway for what promises to be the most competitive and exciting Daytona 500 in recent years. NASCAR on Fox season begins with the running of the Great American Race this February after we have the Super Bowl only on Fox. Starting at their seven. Hand off to Bradshaw. Trying to get a little breathing room. And a penalty flag comes in. Bradshaw is knocked out at the 14. Offense. Half the distance to the goal. Still first down. Tom Coughlin, 64 year old head coach, has been in that position with the Giants. Since 2004, here's the hold out on the edge. He has one year left on his contract. Here he is, the site of one of his greatest victories in his very good coaching career, the NFC Championship game at the end of the 2007 season. And his year in the Giants' year is unraveling before his eyes here in 2010. Yeah, there's been a lot of speculation, especially this week, as to how secure his job is. And, and we talked about it coming into the season, Joe. This was a Giants team that really not a lot of people it's were. first down from the five yard line. Not a lot of people were expecting a lot from this Giants team of 2010. I mean, I, I, there was as little conversation about the Giants going into a football season as I had ever seen here in the last 10 years. But they put themselves in a good position only to see it unravel here over the last three weeks. And now on first and 12, Manningham, a lot of hand checking and a, an interception that's going to go the other way. That's five turnovers. There is no flag. And an interception for Nick Collins is third of the year. But there was a lot of contact downfield right around the 50. Well, Eli Manning just trying to throw it up and give him a chance, you know, and a, got safety help working that way. And, you know, obviously he's not able to get the ball out there far enough, but. Kind of a desperation throw more than anything else. Yeah, now just throwing it up for grabs. Five turnovers by the Giants. And for Eli Manning, his third interception of this game. 23rd of the season. Brandon Jackson. Picks up. Four. Ball came out, saying he was down. You know, you look at it though, Joe. And you know, we said it coming into this game that this was going to be a defense that was going to be hard to throw the ball against, and they were able to get away with it early, and they created some big plays. Didn't have a lot of snaps there in the first half. Didn't complete a lot of passes, but what he did complete were for some big gains and then touchdowns. But it caught up with them here in the second half because they just had they had no ability to control the line of scrimmage and run the football the way they had in previous games. Dom Capers told us when we've committed to the running game we've been able to stop it. He was confident coming into this game and their ability to do that and they did throughout the game. Jackson to the 40. Well if the Packers are headed toward the playoffs and they still have to get a win 
next week to make that happen. We go back to a wild card game last year in the desert. Here's how it ended with Dansby returning the fumble by Aaron Rodgers. And you know Rodgers in that game it didn't end well but he threw right. for 442 yards and four touchdowns well, in that game. Yeah he, he played lights out. I mean he played as well as he can play and, and the thought of him maybe having to wait another year to get a crack at postseason play was hard to imagine. I mean, they're not they're not done yet. And they should say they're not in yet. But this he is. But when they start mentioning him right off the tip of their tongue with Eli Manning and Tom Brady and guys of that caliber it's going to come when he has postseason success. But he comes back after missing last week. He's been a dependable starter for the Green Bay Packers. He missed last week with a concussion. And now when you look at what they can do on the outside, they, they lost a huge weapon when Jermichael Finley went down. But but they are one team that can compensate because of the depth that they have at wide receiver. I mean, all across the board. I mean, really, def defensively, offensively, you know, Ted Thompson, the fact that they've been able to overcome as many injuries as they have and the start of this season. You know, we look at it and you say, gosh, this Green Bay Packer team, they are awfully talented. Little did we know how talented they were. I think we got a real glimpse of that as they started to lose guys. And then other players had stepped in, but just a great job by the entire organization keeping this thing together. Brandon Jackson gets to the 40, a loss of one. They rule him down. Giants will spend their final time out with four and a half to go down by 21. You know, I think Mike McCarthy is uh, is the guy who really deserves the, the credit for the for the job that that he has done. You know I've been saying all along I, I don't know who ultimately is going to win coach of the year and I, I doubt it will be Mike McCarthy but I certainly believe that he deserves to be in the discussion. I mean there's not many guys that can overcome the things that they have and to keep his team you know coming out and playing I talked about last week and what a disappointing loss that was it wouldn't have seen that way initially you're without your starting quarterback you're having to play on the road prime time at New England who was on fire and yet here they got a 10 point lead with a couple minutes in the first half it ends up being a very disappointing loss but just a great job even last week in defeat. Back up Matt Flynn who opened some eyes around this league with his performance against the Patriots on second down still throwing it downfield Jordy Nelson out near the one. I don't think Aaron Rodgers is red hot. I mean, that's just a perfectly thrown pass to Jordy Nelson. Jordy Nelson gets an inside release. He gets a step. That's good coverage there by Corey Webster. But a perfectly thrown ball where Jordy Nelson has a chance then to go up and make the play. That's when playing quarterbacks fun in this league. When you've got the confidence, you can put it on a dime like he did on that play. About a 500-yard day for the Packers against the Giants defense. Crowd wants John Kuhn to carry it. They get their wish. And they get their touchdown. Touchdown day for John Kuhn. And it's 45 17, a 28 point game. And there will be no miraculous comeback the other way for the New York Giants. They suffered one because of Michael Vick and the Eagles last week at the New Meadowland Stadium. But the Green Bay Packers will not take their foot off the gas pedal here. As the completion for 38 yards to Jordy Nelson set it up. And John Kuhn pounded it in.
We welcome in a new audience. We are at Lambeau Field. There's the day for Eli Manning at the top. Three interceptions, three of the five turnovers committed by the Giants offensively, and they've led to 24 Green Bay Packers points. Aaron Rodgers has a career high passing day, actually, a season high. John Kuhn with three touchdowns in this game. Two on the ground, one through the air. DJ Ware on the return with one of his better ones. Here are some of the pictures and Aaron Rodgers who missed the start last week. Here's just part of it. New helmet. Same precision. 80 yards to Jordy Nelson. He used his legs. He used his athletic ability. Made plays happen. And it's thrown for four touchdowns in this game. Giants are out of timeouts. Down by 28. Incomplete for Boss. Well, you think back to that game two weeks ago, Joe, against the Detroit Lions when he got injured, and you just wonder, you know, how different then this might have been going into next week's game against the Chicago Bears. And you know, it's hard for me to imagine that that they lose that game to the Lions. They failed to score a touchdown in the game and lost seven to three. But As it is, Troy, the Bears have won the division. That's right. And so the Packers are playing for what they hope will be a wild card spot. Here's Hagan. And the rookie, Sam Shields, who has an interception in this game, pushes him out of bounds. It was the second interception for Shields, who's had very limited time in his life at cornerback, has great speed, and he made that last tackle. Yeah, he's turned into a pretty good player, you know. I mean, because of the injuries earlier in the season, he was dependent, uh, dependent upon a little bit more than what they had hoped, but. Don Capers likes to trot out five defensive backs. He's gotten a lot of playing time throughout this year. He's gotten better. And even Don Capers will tell you that his play has allowed him as a defensive play caller to really run a lot of different kinds of schemes. It's third down and seven. Here's DJ Ware. Can't get a first down. Matthews on the stop. And so it's fourth down for the Giants. As they trail by 28, three and a half to go. You see Clay Matthews. I mean, this is. You say Sam Shields lets Dom Capers do a lot of different things. That guy right there, Clay Matthews, allows him to do a lot of things too. On fourth down, Manning over the middle finds a first down as he completes it to Bradshaw. Gain of five. Three minutes left. Chicago will roll in here next Sunday. First and ten from the 48. And it's to be determined whether they will have the number two seed wrapped up or not. They're in a fight for it with Philadelphia. Here's Bradshaw. Remember that weekend after Thanksgiving, Chicago at home beat Philadelphia. Chicago won today. They beat the Jets. They're 11 and 4. Philadelphia's night game tonight has been postponed until Second Tuesday night when they will take on the Vikings at home looking for their 11th win. Manningham with a catch spins away. Got away from Shields and hops out of bounds with the 21. Well, the Bears are going to have to. They're going to have to wait a few days, as you said, with that game getting moved to Tuesday to see what then happens with Philadelphia against the Vikings. You look at the numbers for the Giants defense, what they've allowed 508 total yards today. First time allowing 500 plus yards since October of 1980. First time in 480 games. They've allowed 500 yards, and this one is picked off. A.J. Hawk. Six turnovers. C.J. Wilson with pressure. 
And A.J. Hawk ends up with his third interception of the season. Yeah, let A.J. Hawk get into the action as well. I mean, here's a guy who's been pretty steady, leads the defense in, in total tackles on the season, but he just doesn't have the impact plays that you would expect from a first-round pick. But he's able to, to get the interception there off the deflection from Ahmad Bradshaw. A four-interception game for Eli Manning, but that one did glance off the hands of Bradshaw. And Matt Flynn is in a quarterback. Packers have a decision to make with regard to Matt Flynn heading into next year. As he hands off to Nance. We're at the two minute warning. We'll talk about Flynn's night last Sunday night in New England when we come back. What a nightmare for the Giants in Green Bay. Threw for 251 yards, three touchdowns, one interception, and really was seemingly at ease on the road, making his first NFL start last Sunday night. Hands it to Dimitri Nance, a gain of four in a league where everybody's looking for a quarterback, a guy who was the backup to Jamarcus Russell at LSU till his last year, a seventh round pick. Back in 08, he showed something last Sunday night. Well, I sure thought he did, and. I thought he showed great composure not an easy defense certainly to go up against and and then the mastermind of Bill Belichick and the things that he'd like to do to a young quarterback but he showed great composure and poise in the pocket made good decisions I thought he had a had an excellent showing. Here's Nance out to the 30 coming up on a minute left. Fox's football coverage doesn't end when the games are over. Afterward, we ask you to stick around for the OT. Kurt, Terry, Howie, Jimmy, and Michael bring you exclusive interviews, extended highlights, and a look at the updated playoff picture, America's number one post-game show. The OT presented by Lowe's coming right up as we talk about the playoff picture with the clock continuing to wind its fourth down. All week long, you've heard about the Packers. They control their own destiny. There is, Stats Inc. points out, a remote scenario by because of strength of victory the Packers could even win next week on the heels of this week don't do this to me where they would not get into the playoffs <laughs> but it's so convoluted yeah. that you need Pythagoras to come out and <laughs> explain it we'll just say this the likely scenario is the Packers have a home game next Sunday against Chicago and with this win here today they have put themselves in a good position to make it back to the postseason where they were a year ago. The six turnovers today, the most since 2004 against Baltimore, December 12th. And what's happened to this Giants team over the last four and a half quarters, defensively, offensively, special teams across the board, they have fallen apart and they are in a position now where they need help to get into the playoffs with a loss here today. Over the middle almost the fifth pick thrown by Manning and almost the second interception for A.J. Hawk. I don't know what that was but you know this was going to be a tough game for the New York Giants regardless you know I mean coming here to Lambeau against a team that has to win to keep their playoff the hopes alive not an easy task by any means but you know as players. You know they hung in there there in the first half but you're just really disappointed when you don't put forth a better effort than the Giants did in this game. On second and ten incomplete for where. I'm surprised they just don't run the ball and call it a night. Get out of here but they have nowhere to go. They can't go home tonight. They're stuck here. In well, they can at least go to the locker room. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, come on. Then the casino across the street. Third and ten to thirty-three. You're going to be stuck. Although they have got a lot to think about. Yeah. 
Third down and 10. 14 seconds left. Over the middle, it's DJ Ware. He has a first down, but that's the last play of the game. Green Bay wins it by 28. We'll take a break. The OT presented by Lowe's coming up. An impressive win here today for Green Bay. What an afternoon and evening for Aaron Rodgers. Welcome back, number 12. Packers roll by 28 over the Giants. OT coming up.